So I saw these, right? Talking about shoes and to lighten the mood. Ben and Jerry's um, Nike Dunk SPs. Now, I probably shouldn't give a fuck because I've been quite vocal on here that I absolutely hate the Dunk Revival. I think it's completely engineered, manufactured, hype, marketing ploy by Nike to try and reintroduce a shoe that they've failed to kind of help penetrate the youth market. They've tried as they may. You know, when I first got involved in sneakers, that was when the whole Nike Beauty Studio School thing was popping off and they gave people these stupid free Varsity jackets everyone was fighting over. And now look... Well, there's Varsity Jackets now, huh? Remember? There's Varsity Jackets everyone was fighting over from Nike that everyone was thinking, you know, if you don't have a jacket, you're not cool. Where are they now? Who gives a shit? <sighs> so wanky, man. The scene back in the day was a nonsense, innit? They had, brands had us fighting over nonsense things. They had me and you being enemies because I didn't get invited to some fucking screening on exhibition or some dumb show. Like, bloody hell. Obviously, I'm not bitter about it. Obviously not, right? But anyway, continuing on. <laughs> This Ben and Jerry's dunk I shouldn't have a problem with because I'm not going to cut target audience. But I'm just wondering what they're trying to do with the whole dunk thing. Are they just trying to hearken it back to that old era, you know, early 2000s when there were loads of, you know. But this is before even maybe the Nike SB program was actually launched because that was when the orange boxes were around, right? I'm not too sure. Maybe did, maybe that was just before the orange boxes when the stuff started to get really fun, really crazy, like Halloween dunks. I'm thinking of Ray Gun. Maybe it's like the light side of it. Um, there's a few others. I forgot what that orange one was. Maybe it's a Halloween. There was a few really silly dunk SBs towards the end. Um, I think they kind of gave up on trying to make it a legitimate sneaker thing because sneaker heads didn't care about it for the most part. Um, skateboarders obviously they weren't wearing them because they weren't free and they weren't necessarily the best, they weren't the most comfortable shoes to wear. It's funny because if you actually ask people that skate like professionally or even amateur, they'll tell you that dunks are horrible to actually wear. I'm not sure if they've changed the mold or the last now, but back in the day they weren't necessarily the most comfortable shoes to wear. So coupled that with the fact that, you know, early on skateboarders were a little bit um, they turn their nose up at Nike getting involved in skateboarding it kind of felt like they were just like you know what fuck it let's just go for hype beast they like colourful shit you know the kind of kid that wears like a Louis Vuitton and Supreme box logo hoodie like just thought fuck it let's just target these customers but there's not many of those kids around right those kids will naturally be kids who probably come from an affluent background or maybe have disposable income regardless but there's just not a lot of those kids to go around for those kind of shoes you still need um, the general consumer of trainers to still be into them but I just don't know how you could justify wearing these if you're just a casual sneakerhead. It just doesn't make any sense. So these are Ben and Jerry's uh, Nike Dunk Low SBs featured here by High Beast. Um, I guess that's, that's what it says in the tin, right? If you've ever eaten a tub of Ben and Jerry's, you know exactly what it looks like. And they just basically applied that same sort of color motif and applied it onto a shoe. Um, is there any interesting material bits here? Yep. So where the cow sort of print is meant to be there, if I'm assuming it's sort of like pony hair kind of um application there which might be a little bit interesting you've got the whole drip on the swoosh there you've got what's that an lgbtq rainbow on the insole um i don't know man i just i just don't know i just don't know what the target audience or what the me what the point of this is but yeah here's a few more pictures of it still looks terrible and again you know my you know my biggest pet peeve with this is just more sort of product shots why did they ever relay shoes properly? Like, I remember when I was working in retail, one of the biggest things that you'd get pulled up on from your managers was, number one, not taking stuff back to the stockroom, right? Leaving boxes around when people try on shoes and they didn't want to buy them. You're meant to be, you know, um, passing them down to the stockroom or going up and or going up or going down and putting them back yourself, right? So that you've got a clear work surface or work area to kind of uh, maneuver in. So that was one. And the other thing that used to get a lot of trouble for was the laces on shoes. Whenever the shoes came as you know, from the factory or whatever, you had to put a display pair out. You'd have to relace them in the proper way, which meant kind of if you look at these, it meant you take all the laces out from the top to the bottom and leave the bottom one. And then that lace here with my arrow I'm pointing actually that goes underneath the lace stays and pops out. That would go over the top and then pop in. And you do the same thing on the other side and so I follow the pattern um, and basically if, if it was on the left hand side it's kind of hard to describe it but basically the laces on the left hand side would be looping over the top and the laces on the right hand side would be looping over the top on that side so it was, it was a whole thing you had to do it was just like a thing and then I guess the third and last thing you'd get out in trouble for was not cleaning um, the shelving units and you know making sure things were evenly spaced out and clothes were racked up properly all that good stuff but 
the laces were a big deal and they made it seem as if like if we they, i remember once being told it was similar to like we had to do it because if the brand owner came in or run re representative of the brand a sales executive maybe or a merchandiser they would get annoyed that we didn't do that last bit right that's the, that was the whole general thinking behind it so we would go our way to do it because we didn't want to get ducked points on our mystery shop that might affect our bonus or our christmas party budget whatever so it's a big onus on it and then you see these brands sending shoes or sending kind of press uh shots to like publications like hype that have got massive readership base and they're sending shit like this with like the laces all fucked up like it's just not on really isn't it? it looks a little bit dodge personally just like they've made no effort whatsoever you'd want to puff like if you're gonna make if you're gonna try and make these appealing you'd want to relace them if they've got a second pair you'd want to have the second pair of laces on display too so someone can see what they look like you would want to actually lace them in a way where it would reflect the people who are going to buy them right maybe a little bit of a baggier lace style but you want to do something to kind of jazz them up a bit you won't just like present them like this it's not enough right i don't know maybe it's just me maybe the kids that want these are going to buy them regardless but i think i don't know i just think they need to have more customers than just the high beast kids right i'm assuming maybe i don't know i don't know Maybe I'm just completely wrong in this. Maybe they've survived this long putting out this amount of shit product that they just probably know how to kind of dial it in. But let's read a little bit of the article and hear what they have to say here. It said, after weeks of surprises, samples and sweet anticipation. Oh, Thai beast writing is terrible, isn't it? Sweet anticipation, come on. Nike's official announced the release date for the Ben Jerry's Nike Dunk Low SB. Chunky Dunky originally teased at the tail end of March. This scrumptious collaboration between beloved Vermont based ice cream maker and Nike SB will soon be served up at skate shops. They need to stop with the fucking part of the with the ice cream puns in it. We get it, mate. Um, boasting a tasty trifecta of tones. Jesus, they're just going straight for it. <laughs> Textures and prints. This vibrant dunk has been nuts on one of Benjamin's famous flavors, Chunky Monkey, a banana ice cream garnished with fudge chunks and walnuts. Bruff. Can you imagine the amount of corny, horrendous pictures we're going to see on Instagram of kids wearing these shoes, eating Chunky Monkey, like covering it on their faces, getting their very well endowed girlfriends to pose wearing, holding the one, imagine having the one Ben and Jerry thing over one tit and one shoe over another tit like that. Oh, so cringe. So cringe. And it was funny too. I bet, I bet there's a... A small population of kids that buy this shoe that didn't even know that flavor of chunk that flavor of ice cream even existed they had to google it you know what i mean and then you're going and or or cool thing would be if imagine they sell these and then somehow that flavor of ice cream ends up selling out it ends up having to be backdated or some shit that would be wild it probably ain't gonna happen but that'll be really really funny if that did happen um it continues here What's it saying here? Overlays and tongues are built with pony hair. Okay, as I mentioned before, that's where the cow print is. It's definitely going to be pony hair. So that's that's the, probably the coolest bit about it. Um, I think, again, maybe for a girl, they might look pretty cool. Smaller feet. If you've got smaller feet, they'll probably look good on you regardless. But it's just, I think I mentioned this before to a friend, it's just really hard to see somebody that actually has some sense of personal style being able to wear these or justifying having these in their collection. There's no reason to have these, like, whoops, whoops, service what do they serve like what 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 purpose do they serve what's the point of them or unless you're just that kid that wants to go to a festival which is probably going to be until next year and then you wear these stand you know, some monochromatic shorts and a basic t-shirt and then you have these as your loud piece in your outfit that might be a thing but again would you want to would the same kid that buys these going to a festival would they want to get them dirty i don't know i know i would i wouldn't give a shit if i if i wore them i'd wear them everywhere but I know the kids that buy these would want to have them looking box fresh and just defeats the purpose because they just look like they probably look a lot a lot, a lot better on the shelf actually you know or maybe as a weird sort of like hype bedroom decoration in a perspex box but as is um these things are ramped up even further on and around the collar the tongue and the heel are squid what's that equipped with puff with puffy ben and jerry style text and the form of which even states chunky donkey it was a chunky donkey da, 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 da. as 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 is part of cause of the collaboration at speed chunky donkey might will debut exclusively in skate shops on may 23rd it'll then hit nike seeker stores on may 26th with a hundred hundred usd 
uh, price tag is pretty good. I find it funny that they're still trying to do this thing where they push them out to skate shops only as a way to kind of like, because I think that was the, um, I think that was kind of maybe a way to appease the skate shops, right? We're going to give you the exclusive shoes to drive business to your, to your store. But then on the back end, like you're a bit scumbaggy and they, impl they kind of like force you in order to kind of carry all their core dead shoes that no one buys week in week out so you can get the opportunity to get like a tier zero exclusive drop it's like a golden handshake if you want the exclusive drops you have to carry all the other garbage they sell that no one buys um but i guess it's good for skate shops because they get a lot of business get a lot of traffic you know they probably don't make that much money week in week out in terms of like people because i guess you'd have to rely on customers buying new decks all the time and people don't i don't know how long average decks last but i know mine have lasted for a while and i'm just a casual skater so I'd imagine the same will probably apply for somebody that probably does it a bit more frequently. Maybe what max every eight months, six months, maybe you might change it. I'm not sure if it's more. So they're not making that much money on like hardware and stuff. So they're sort of relying, weirdly enough, on these drops to kind of make you know a good amount of money. I don't. I think I don't know how much money you would make on them anyway. Regardless, if you send them at you know the recommended retail price. I guess just a case just keeping the lights on and hoping you get some add-on sales, right? Hoping some kid that buys that picks up you know, a t-shirt from Bruns or whatever. But yeah, um, due to come out May 26th, so in a couple of weeks, um, I guess just in time for payday. If you're that way inclined, check them out. Um, ben and Jerry's, Dunk SB's. Hmm. Just, I, don't, I just don't understand what the point is. It's like, you know, if ever there was a case for like, you know, um, wastage and the whole environmental conversation this has to be up here because it's just like what is the point of these existing like why 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 would you do this but maybe it's just me maybe it's me if you do enjoy them get them if you can